Tonight on our show, it's our Hands Across the Ocean special. I've got stars from America. USA! 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 <laughs> and, and stars from Britain. Hello. <laughs> Let's start the show! tonight not just those four stars later in the show we'll be joined by sir david attenborough ladies and gentlemen <laughs> yes ah. sir david there's sir david there just securing his two for one cinema tickets <laughs> and, and, <laughs> what's happened to those animals it's so uh, Everyone loved the series Life on Earth, where David met gorillas in their natural habitat. Now, gorillas are expert communicators, and apparently they had a subtle way of letting David know when they'd had enough of being filmed. <laughs> we hear you. Let's get some guests on! Later, we have our music from Hot American Export, L. King. But first, as Dr. House MD, he was the most watched star in the world. Now he's back on the BBC in the new Le Carre thriller, The Night Manager. It's Hugh Laurie, everybody! <laughs> it is! It is! Hello! Oh, really nice to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank she is the double master winning star of Peep Show 2012, The Iron Lady and Broadchurch, and one of the country's best loved actresses. It's Olivia Coleman, ladies and gentlemen! successful stand-up comedian in America and a fully-fledged movie star. Now he's in the sequel to the smash hit Ride Along. It's Kevin Hart, everybody! He's the godfather of gangster rap turned Hollywood heavyweight. His films have grossed almost two billion dollars. Straight out of Compton, it's Ice Cube! <laughs> The weird thing is, um, uh, Ice Cube, we could be related. Because, um, <laughs> apparently, apparently, there's some Irish stock in your past. No. <laughs> I mean, it could be. You never know. No. Uh, Isn't it? But you, you have an Irish name. Do I? It's no yes. shade. Oh, oh, no shade. shade. It Irish be, name. It couldn't be more Irish. Has no it's one told right. you that till now? <laughs> no. <laughs> I've been told. <laughs> but, you know, I think my mother just liked the name. Okay, is it your Christian name? It's, it's my... Yeah, I think. Listen, Brian, let me educate you something. Black people... Black people are notorious for picking things that they saw one day and say, that's my baby name. <laughs> <laughs> that's all that was. Okay? That's all that was. Grandma was nothing. There's no amazing story behind it. People would love to tell you, yes, it actually came from an Irish forefather that did this. That's not the case. His mother was reading the paper and she was eating some cereal and somebody in the back said, oh, Shay. She said, that'd be a good name. And that's it. That's how it happened. That's it. You are here promoting your movie, but Kevin, you're working at the same time. You're doing yeah. stand-up gigs. Double dipping. That's yes. <laughs> Double dipping. Uh, doing a ton of stand-up shows. My What Now tour is here as well. Uh, major thank you to the to the UK fans. The tour sold out in like literally two days. So you guys are amazing. Wow. Way back when. Wow. Uh, yeah. so we did that. 
And, uh, and then after that, we came over here for promo. What, what Cuba and myself love doing is really uh, getting involved with the fans. You know, we love putting our feet in the street and, and really being active and interacting. So we've been doing a ton of pop-ups. Yep. And just delivering the movie, uh, the best of our ability, which is live and in person. And we're great. splitting all the tour money. That is not true. Because <laughs> <laughs> you bought him here. You bought him here. I mean, I'm not, here. Yeah. That's not true. Yeah, you know, you know he bum rushed my stage the other day. Oh, did he? <laughs> I'm telling him, he tackled me from the back. Scared to live in mess out. <laughs> uh, it was one of the most frightening moments of my life, to be honest. I think we might have another frightening moment for you. This is uh, you in Manchester. Uh, now, do you even know the name of that show? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's it I called? I was the only black guy there that day. <laughs> That's you in Beverly Cattle, but this picture, this looks like you've been photoshopped in. Yeah. <laughs> like, are you really there? Yeah. No. Roy's rolls no, can't no. be that big. First of all, it looks like I grew up there. <laughs> <laughs> and Olivia, with Fraud Church, presumably your kind of level of recognition has gone up. You must get recognized all the time now. Yes. Yes, I do. Oh, I know where you're going, yes. Yes. Well, that, uh, do tell them. Mm, I hope my mum's not watching. <laughs> but, um, there was a slight road rage incident. And, um, you know those crossings where they're absolutely... I don't know if it's the same rules apply, but, um, they're not staggered, they're straight crossroad thing. Do you know what I mean? I mean, you're turning right... I have no right. idea what you're talking about, okay. keep going. <laughs> so you turn right, you have to turn in front of each other, not behind each other on a staggered crossing. Do you know what I mean? No! Does anyone know what I mean? Yes. Oh, mean so, 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 no, yes. don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and you've got to go behind each... No, That's you've got to go not, in no, front of each other. I had to go in front, because it was a, it was you a had to go equal in front of each other. thing, yes. Okay. So this woman was coming towards me and wanting to go right, her right, and I was going right, so I, I turned to go in front of her, and she went... And as if I had tried to drive into her, and I thought, okay, well, there's no-one else coming, so I'll just... To keep her happy, I'll do what's wrong, but I'll go behind her. And she was... Uh, doing that in the in the car, <laughs> and it was starting to really piss me off because I was right and I was helping her out, and then I suddenly got this red mist. Just as our cars were coming next to each other, I suddenly went fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and just as she was doing that, she went. You, Laurie, uh, straight out of Oxford, you, uh, no, <laughs> you have had some rap experience. <laughs> I think you, I, you may have been misinformed there. I don't no, know. You've got evidence. Well, well now, well now. Well. <laughs> have you started? <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's the opening line. Uh, why don't we take it from there? Well now. It's called well now. Um, I, well, I dabbled. Yes, it was yeah. you and Stephen Fry. Yeah. And what was it actually called? It was called... A, it was called I'm a good-ass mother liker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. You see, we... we yes, you see, it was, we, it was, it was we, nice, polite yeah. rap. Yeah, it was it polite was English polite rap. rap. We've think... got a little clip, just, oh, so, you, no, just no. so you can enjoy it. Oh, no, yeah. you haven't. Yes, here's oh, you, Laurie, no. uh, doing his polite oh, rap. Mother Laika. <laughs> Everything was hot except the pants. No, yeah, the, the pants, the pants was off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything else was great. First of all, it's in the camera, for the, in the camera, I mean, your swag great. is on a thousand yeah. right now. <laughs> oh. Now. The guys are here because uh, they've got the sequel to Ride Along entitled Ride Along 2. Yes. <laughs> yes. Good job, Graham. You nailed that. You nailed that. Yeah. I've got Sweet. the facts, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, now, it opens here uh, tonight, but of course, it's already open in America. Huge hit, knock Star Wars off the top of the tree, yeah. all that. So, what, what is the, the premise of the movie? The premise of the movie, I play a crack detective uh, out of Atlanta, and I have this. Bug mosquito by the name of Kevin Hart. That's not. That's not. That's uh, not. <laughs> he 
wants to marry my sister. So, you know, it's the whole thing of you always hate the guy that wants to marry your sister. So, you know, I hate That's him over here. That's a strong word. You dislike me. Dis I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like me. I'm trying to scare him from not being a cop by taking him on a ride along, and it doesn't work because he ends up helping me solve the case. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. But it's a lot of stuff that happens on that ride. I mean, you're looking at a relationship with two guys. Uh, that's a that's a grounded, genuine relationship. You know, my character, Ben Barber, inspires to be what James is. And what means the most to me is this man's approval. But getting that approval is tough. So along this road, it's about me proving myself above and beyond and eventually getting the attention of the guy that I look up to. And reading interviews between you, it's, it's unclear. Like, do you get on on set? Or is it, do you genuinely kind of it's annoy each other? my best friend. Okay. Say it. <laughs> Say it. Come on, man. Say it. We're in the UK. Say it. Let them know how you feel. Best friend touch. Come on, man. Come on, man. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. But didn't he steal your catchphrase? He always steals everything. You know, my, when people see me, they be like, yo, Q. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey. <laughs> Do it. Good. I'm not going to say that. So I say, hey, Q, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. <laughs> That's so hey, weak. Hey, it has weak. no flavor it's, to it. We're, <laughs> we're best friends. <laughs> We've got a clip for the movie. Uh, right along to this is uh, you guys trying to get into a party undercover, oh. and uh, your antagonism is, is barely concealed. Prince Admiral Stephen Matumbe, Nigerian consul. Plus two. My two servants. I don't have you on the list. Could you, you can check the VIP list. And do not look me in my eye. Don't look at me. You look at the pod, you read the names, and you look at me and you close your eyes. Look at me, don't look at me. Look at me. <laughs> that was a test. You failed. You uh, aren't on it. All right, Stalin, guys. AJ's on it. Step aside, por favor. Wait! Wait. This is all your fault. I'm your bodyguard. Not your servant. Hey! <laughs> you are what I say you are! <laughs> oh, God. Mm. Traditional sign of respect. Okay, try it now. Check the list one more time. <laughs> there it is. So, sorry about that, Chiquitito. Head, head it right in. I, I cannot feel my face. <laughs> We've got to mention uh, straight out of Compton. Uh, yes. Congratulations, Oscar nominated. <laughs> Oscar nominated best original screenplay. Yes. And obviously, because the Oscars have now got mired in this in this controversy this year. Mm. So, wh where do you stand on all of that? Like, will uh, you go? Are you going? I never used to go anyway. So, <laughs> you're you not know, boycotting. I, you can't boycott something that you never went to anyway. So <laughs> that's kind of weird. Any, no, nah, you know, it's uh, I look at it as a, uh, you know, like a horse race. You know what I'm saying? Once your horse lose the race, you tear up your ticket and go on and, and just back on out. You know, because it's nothing really to put that much energy into like that. It's uh. We don't do movies for the industry. We do movies for the fans, for the people. And, uh, you know, the industry, you know, if they give you a trophy or not or pat you on the back or not, it's nice, but it's not uh, something that you should dwell on. You, you know, we got accolades from all levels, you know, from our core fans, from our curious fans, from our fans or people who you know, didn't even think they wanted to see that movie, you know. I think an older generation got an understanding on why we did that kind of music, and a younger generation got a history lesson, and we got so much praise for the movie, and it's like, how could you be mad because one other academy or guild or anybody didn't say it's yeah, yeah. the number one? You know, it's like, you know, it's, it's crying about, you know, not having enough icing on your cake. And, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just ridiculous. Because you guys have both seen the movie, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I loved it. Absolutely loved it. And I think, by the way, that that's about the sanest description of that, this whole process of awards that I've ever heard. I mean, as a way of treating it, as a way of thinking about it. I think yeah. that's <laughs> And 
was the process of the making of the film? Did it kind of rebuild Bridges with the existing members of NWA? Are you all kind of good and... Yeah, we were already cool, you know? It was uh, water under the bridge by the time we started doing the, the movie. And it was great to get with everybody and hash up all those stories and, no, that's not how it happened. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, and then going back and forth and creating the whole, uh, you know, script. It was, a, it was a load of work. It was a major process. A lot of cooks in the kitchen. Uh, but we got a nice meal out of it. And it was but great. you're getting back together, is that right? Are you going you, to you gonna play... Coachella. Well, we're gonna we're gonna definitely play the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame because NWA was inducted, and uh, now. Wow. Uh, so that's great. And then you know I got Coachella. I'm gonna try to get all the guys together and do an amazing show. I'll do it. <laughs> uh, you I'll know. do it. So you don't even have to ask. I'll do it. And he's not joking, is he? <laughs> I'm here for my friend. <laughs> and great and sort of extraordinary that your son did such an amazing uh, job yeah. uh, playing you. I mean, that's what I'm most proud of. You know, more than having this movie, having Stroud Compton, this, that, and the other, is the fact that my son was able to take an opportunity and run with it and hopefully set himself up in, you know, one of the greatest industries in the world. Uh, and, you know, uh, I'm so proud just as a father. And, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. it was a movie about N.W.A., too. You know, that... <laughs> but, but also, something, like, how much did he know? Like, when he was doing scenes, was he kind of like, you did this, Dad? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> In the hotel rooms, you know, some of them scenes. <laughs> he's like, like, man, y'all took guns? Y'all did it again. Man, y'all was doing the most. <laughs> like, yeah, those was your favorite scenes, too. <laughs> But he, but he did know it. I mean, because how old was he when he knew the lyrics to Straight Outta Compton? Oh, they was young, man. You know, my kids is two, three years old. <laughs> I mean, it's playing all the time. And, you know, they would rap it and censor themselves, you know, just... They would, like, rap the lyrics straight out of Compton. Crazy mu name Ice Cube from the... <laughs> 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 Profanity, you know what I mean? So, it's just funny. And now, uh, you, Laurie, you have got kids, but none of them have followed in, in your footsteps, don't No. <laughs> <laughs> no, they haven't. Um... <laughs> I mean, they, they, so they have did, proper jobs. They, they all did. But they have proper jobs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. They they all did a bit. They all tried it and were good at it. Actually, I thought, but but didn't want to. Um, I I just think it's an amazing thing to think of your son doing this because I, you know, most men are in some version, are trying to trying to play their father anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, either imaginary or real. They're yeah. trying to sort of play the role of their father until they find out. You know. <clears throat> If they ever do, some some don't. If they ever find out who they are, I think that's just an incredible thing. I mean, I had a very this is a very, a very sort of mild version of it because I was playing. I spent almost ten years playing a doctor, and my father was a doctor, and I felt like I was, I was a fake version of what he really was, and I mm. felt I was sort of constantly guilty about that <laughs> um, because I think I think a lot of men do actually grow up feeling like that, feeling like fake versions of their own. And, and until you, you hopefully get to a point where you can think, well, I am, I am the real thing in some form. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's, Whatever it is, it's real. Because, Olivia, how many kids have you got now? Three. Three. Oh. So if one of them, or indeed all of them, came to you and said, yay, we're going to be an actor or actress, would you be thrilled, horrified? I don't know. It's quite a hard thing to answer, because I love it. I love my job. But I know I've been lucky. So it'd be quite hard for my kids to go into it and be less lucky or... Yes. Uh, so, you couldn't say, I'd like you to be a successful actor. Yeah. <laughs> also, <laughs> Teach also, them to be lucky. <laughs> but they're also very clever. They're much cleverer than me, so... Uh, well, it's hard to know with the baby, but... Um... <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't walk into walls or anything, uh, so it's good. Yeah. <laughs> good, good. Uh, yeah, I'd like to think maybe they'll do something, uh, you know, save people or change the world. Oh, no pressure. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> And Kevin, do your kids, do they aspire to be a performer like you? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm in trouble. My, uh, <laughs> my kids are just like me. They're, they're cut. <laughs> it's scary. It's so scary. Now, my son, my son is a little slower. My daughter is just like me. I, 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 can't, I, I can't. It's my son. I catch my son. I catch my son doing some of the stupidest stuff. I, the son, why are you licking that wall? <laughs> Lick the wall, boy. Oh, well, I'm 
just playing. No, you're not playing licking the wall, son. Just go over there and just play with that stuff. My daughter is just, she's in love with what I do. She fully gets it. My daughter is, is 10 years old. And, you know, I'm, I'm big on letting my kids see me in my work environment, whether it's on set, whether it's on stage, right. tour. I let them be around their dad so they can really understand what I do. My daughter sits, like, when I'm on stage, I don't let them, they only allow to watch the first seven to ten minutes of my show because that part's clean. Then it gets, <laughs> then it gets filthy. After that. So the first ten minutes, she just sits and she watches and she mimics me in the house. Like, my daughter's got a tight five minutes. Like, she's got a tight five minutes, right? She's like, Dad, yeah, introduce me. Like, she's got bits. She's got my mannerisms. She comes off stage. She's like, what do you do? What's your job? What's your name? <laughs> It's, it's really scary. So Ice Cube had his son in his movie. Olivia Colman has gone one further, ladies and gentlemen, because in her new show, she had her daughter in her in the things like Russian dolls. <laughs> and, 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 and your mom plays a role. In, yes. This is The Night Manager, the new series that you got oh, created. In her. Yeah, oh, in her. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Where do you go? Oh, I don't know. I want to support <laughs> It's a UK thing. All right. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Um, but they, they, they wrote the bump in. Yeah. When I first went to meet the director, and um, I just found out I was pregnant, and I thought, I can't, I can't lie, because it's going to become obvious. And so I said I was pregnant. And uh, Susanna went, oh, OK. So um, she said, I must talk to... Uh, Told to the producers, and, and so this is my impression of Susanna. Yes. <laughs> it's lucky she's not here because then I can tell you it's really good. Okay. <laughs> it is, it's absolutely <laughs> spot on. Yeah. And then, and I was going, and um, if you remember Fargo, Frances McDormand was pregnant and it really added to it, I think it would help. Sort of <laughs> fingers crossed. And they went away and came back and said, Yeah, okay, we can do pregnant, yeah. Uh, yeah, we're riding in. So. And it was good because you didn't have to carry a bag in front of yourself or no. bag of coats. I got and so big, there, was, there would have been no hiding it. <laughs> and then, and uh, also, I was waddling quite a lot. And Susanna once said, Could you, uh, could you walk less pregnant? Yeah. <laughs> 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 My pelvis is like that. <laughs> So this is uh, The Night Manager uh, coming out on BBC One next month. See that? Um, I look like someone. Like a, I've snuck into the back of shot. <laughs> it's clearly, it's, a, it's a, like a model shoot. <laughs> Spherical being. It's like, it's like when they left the paper cups on the mantelpiece in Downton. <laughs> <laughs> she looked like she's back there fixing his suit. <laughs> like a wardrobe person. Like. Exactly. <laughs> Brush you off. And she didn't say it, but when she said it's it, I was like, it? it kind of does look <laughs> if, if anyone's watching in America, by the way, it's also on there. It's on uh, BBC America and uh, AMC. And I guess because of all that involvement, it looks amazing. It's got this huge budget, it looks like, for a TV show. Yes. Yeah, Americans do know how to make things look very good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <It's> exciting. <laughs> and uh, obviously it's the famous John le Carre novel, but if people don't know, what can you tell us about it? Who do you play within the film? I play, I'm proud to say, the worst man in the world. Ooh. We actually play sworn enemies. This yeah. is a sort of the angel of vengeance, and I am the worst man in the world. And we, uh, let's say that because there are no other actors here, let's say it's all about us. Okay. <laughs> uh, is, we, we wind up in the right at the end of the thing in, in a sort of a final uh, confrontation between really good and evil. Um, it's about arms dealing, it's about uh, a conspiracy to pull off a very terrible arms deal with very terrible people. And uh, Olivia's character is, sets about trying to undo the villain of the piece, the worst man in the world, which is me. And um, why was it? it's been changed? It, it wasn't a woman originally. Yes, no, that's right. Um, my character, Burr, was a man, and they thought they'd like to... Burr would be a good person to, to turn into a woman. I think you probably work there more than me in that... I was a horse, my oh. character. <laughs> <laughs> we could have a talking horse, or why don't we have a person? Um, no, there, but, there, there never are enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but, but, but you, Laura, you love this book. I, I love. Well, mm -hmm. Le Carre is this is holy text for me, um, and I loved. Uh, and you know him, right? Well, 
Yes, I would like to say now I do a little bit. I think he, I don't think he'd blank me in the street. But I think, you at uh, his party, his birthday party? I did. I got taken. I was as I, I got didn't. taken as Stephen <laughs> <laughs> as Stephen Fry's date uh, it, um, to his seventieth birthday party at a restaurant in Hampstead. And at this party were I don't quite know who these people were because you're not supposed to know anyway. But there was something like the head of the CIA and the head of the KGB were at this dinner. Big, big cheeses, oh, anyway. Yeah, yeah. And the place was crawling with bodyguards, and there was a lot of earpieces, and people were packing. Yeah. And... <laughs> yeah. Was this Thank a you. Yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Was this a captain? Yeah. I think I know that spot. Yeah. <laughs> I have the lingo. <laughs> <laughs> During, during the dinner, one of his sons sort of w went whispering around the table. There was a piano in the room, and, and he went whispering around the table. He said, does anybody know how to play Happy Birthday? And I said, well, if no one else is, uh, yeah, I'll do it if you want. Um, so they said, okay, you sneak over to the piano. No one's looking. You sneak over to the piano, sit down there. We'll, we'll signal the kitchen. They'll light the candles on the cake, and then they'll bring it in. You start playing. I said, okay, so I sort of snuck over. I sat down, and I lifted the lid like this, and I was all poised. <laughs> And I could see the kitchen where they were lighting the... I could see them fussing over the cake. And they, they lit the candles, 70 of them, so, this, so I'll shorten that bit. <laughs> um, and then the last thing they did, because obviously this was the restaurant's habit, the last thing they did before they brought out the cake was switch off the lights. Oh. So the place went dark, and there were so, just an eruption of guns and walkie-talkies. <laughs> <and, laughs> nobody moved everybody on the floor, and I had a sort of... Like, <laughs> Honestly, I am literally just the piano player. <laughs> <laughs> um, but order was restored. Nobody died. Um, it was a really exciting moment. And, but it also shows you the respect in which Le Carre is held in the world of, of spying and, you know, intelligence. Well, listen, we've got a clip, but it's more of a kind of a taster of the whole, the whole series. So, uh, here it is. War is spectator sport. What do you want, Miss Bird? I want to make you an offer. Bring down Richard Roper. I want to put you inside his operation. You'll be in so deep, you'll worry that you'll never get out. My name's Pine. I'm the night manager. I think he might be playing both sides. We need Richard Roper. I'm going to get you out of here. And you think you're safe? We're pulling you out. We haven't really going to have an operation. If you step out of line, we'll make you howl for your mother. She was, she was promoting a film. Amazing. She didn't know who she was playing in the film. <laughs> it was finished. It was in the it cinema. Was it was a long time after we'd filmed it. <laughs> <laughs> you might have checked before you came on a chat show. <laughs> She is about it. I, I have no idea. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, smile. I, I don't know it. why they, they also, because contractually, no offence, but we were sort of asked to come and. and All right, fine, thank but you. I love you too. <laughs> no, no, no. Wow. <laughs> she doesn't mean that. I don't mean that. I didn't. Oh, God. You see, why? She doesn't why want do they to send... be here, ladies and gentlemen. That's not true. I love Graham. <laughs> but I do wonder why they asked me to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't help, do I? <laughs> 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 I, I just keep thinking she's never been in one of my films. <laughs> no, she's good. I like, I like, it. Thank I you. like her. Thank you very much. I like you. <laughs> All right, uh, on to my next guest. He's been on our screens for 65 years. And now, on the eve of his 90th birthday, he's back at the Beeb with a new Natural History special. Please welcome broadcasting legend, Sir David Attenborough. <laughs> Oh. Very 
nice to have you. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, you've all you've said hello. You've met everybody. I see you, Kevin Hart. Last thing like Henry. You've met before, have you, Olivia? Twice. <laughs> but, oh, I'm so embarrassed that I, um, I was so excited to meet you. Well, I didn't really meet you. I just sort of stumbled into you and went, oh, I think you're amazing. <laughs> Very polite, and then I realised I should leave, and then I did it a second time. <laughs> <laughs> At a different occasion. So, third time lucky, Sorry. there you go. Uh, yeah. Friends now, friends. <laughs> now, this new special, yes. uh, Attenborough and the Giant Dinosaurs, on yes. the Sunday, BBC One, 6.30. And it's extraordinary that these discoveries, really amazing discoveries, are still being made. Why, why had this not been discovered before? Uh, I suppose it's comparatively rare. Uh, they lived in a rather remote place. They lived in Patagonia, right at the far end of South America. Um, and, um, you know, dinosaur fossils aren't all that common. Um, and and a, a local um, a man who had a big estancia, a sheep run, saw this enormous bone sticking out of the cliff. Uh, and he told local people, and eventually a paleontologist, a fossil expert, came along. He said, yeah, it's a dinosaur. And not only is it a dinosaur, it's a very, very big dinosaur. <laughs> and that particular bone was the thigh bone, this one, and it's uh, nine feet tall, three metres tall. Oh, so it's huge, this animal. It's incredible. I tell you what, before we talk about it some more, because it, it, talking about it doesn't really convey the size of it, so we've got a clip from the show that conveys just how big these things were. The first sauropods to appear on Earth were comparatively small creatures. This is the cast of the thigh bone of one of them. It's not even as big as my thigh bone. But after about 20 million years, some had become pretty big. This is a thigh bone from one of those creatures. But then, after that, our giant appeared. This is its thigh bone. Isn't that nuts? Yeah, yeah. It's just a <laughs> you, know, you know the dinosaurs in the Natural History Museum? Yeah. Diplodocus. It fills the, the, the entrance hall, you know? Yeah. This one is half as big again. The new one. Oh, my God. Wow. Wow. And what is more, old Diplodocus, the one in the... could walk underneath this one's belly. Oh. Uh -huh. and, and, and how many... Cos they, they didn't just find... They didn't just find one of these. It wasn't like a freak. It wasn't like, oh, he's very tall for his age. I mean... <laughs> they're, they're, <laughs> they, there were a lot of these guys. Well, there must have been, because otherwise there wouldn't have been any more, if you see. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I'm with but you. But actually, it so happened, this particular deposit where they found those bones, there are the remains of seven different individuals, all of the same kind. So they're all whoppers. Yeah. And now, in your own house, you have some... No, I don't have one. No, no, house. you don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But no, you do have some well, dinosaur I've got things. Occasional, occasional thing. Like, what, what have you got? What have you got? What do you want? Well, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you do me... <laughs> so, Dave, what you give you've me? got a dinosaur... Foot... Is it a footprint you've got? I've got a dinosaur footprint. OK. Footprints. <clears throat> a dinosaur footprints are quite common in Texas. Uh, you, can, you can buy 100 yards of dinosaur footprints. Kevin Hart's shopping already. He's uh, like... <laughs> I was about to ask the price for that thigh bone. I know what I want to do with my money. <laughs> <laughs> this is something good well, to show off to my I friends. Tell you, there, there was a Texas millionaire that came the fashion to buy 50 yards of dinosaur footprint and put them in your garden, you see. And a Texas man. So jealous now, Kevin Hart, so jealous. Bought, <laughs> bought 20 yards and laid them out and I'm very proud of it, and then invited the, the next door neighbour, who was also a millionaire, to come over and look at his dinosaur footprint. So, so the, the visitor came in, saw these immense footprints around, and said, My God, what are those? <laughs> and he said, They're dinosaur footprints. And the millionaire the visitor said, I had no idea they'd come so close to the house. <laughs> I don't want to embarrass you, but we have to mention you do have quite a large birthday very, very soon. Yes. Uh, it's, what, 90? We can say it. It's 90. It's a thing to be celebrated. Wow. Yes. Yeah. So, how is it? I mean, 
How is it going to be marked uh, personally? How is it going to be marked by the BBC? What's happening? I would like to ignore the whole issue. <laughs> Uh, the BBC is talking now about doing something on the programme. I don't know what, but they're going to do something. They'll have to do something. Oh, something. Yes, right. they will. A cake. <laughs> <laughs> and Hugh Laurie could play Happy Birthday. I will. Yes. I'm, <laughs> I'm there. I'm there. It'll be lovely. Yeah. It'll be lovely. <laughs> OK, it's uh, time for music. Now, this Grammy-nominated singer-songwriter is destined for great things. Here, singing her hit single, X's and O's, please welcome L King. But they never want to leave Aces and the O-O-O's They on me Like the O-O-O's They want me To me O-O-O's They want me To me O-O-O's They want me Like the summer lava Down in New Orleans I kept them warm in the wind I left them frozen in the spring Everyone sit down, sit down, sit down. Do you want to take your seat first? I... Okay. I also <laughs> to take it. I thought you might want to be part of the... I don't oh, know. see, I just automatically think it's like, oh, he's yes, being mean, don't... he wants my seat. <laughs> well, I'm in the back of a car. <laughs> <laughs> I'll sit in the middle, I don't mind. Uh, no. Uh, well, we must tell the people, that is from the album uh, Love Stuff. Yeah. Which, and uh, where did the name come from? Um, uh, <laughs> a sex shop in Florida. There you go. <laughs> Anyone familiar? Yep. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Can I just say that um, I'm a huge, huge, huge fan, and Express Yourself was the first uh, rap song that I learned every word to. Oh, um, wow. Oh, you're talking to Q. <laughs> It's a mix up. Sorry. Yeah. Here, got it. I'm so sorry. Go I know my, my eyes are so yeah. big. Got it. Go ahead. Wide sorry. Eyed. Oh. Sorry. It was my first, um, like, f favorite hip hop song ever, and I've been a crazy hip hop fan ever since. So, it's awesome to be really close to you. Man, it's, <laughs> man, it's awesome. Your song was crazy. We was over here just nodding our head. That bass line That's is sick. That's what we're talking about. The bass line. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's how you get the black people with a strong bass. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, now you are a fan. I know you're particularly a fan of Sir David Attenborough. I am. Hi. Are you? Yes. Yeah. Kind. But no, because you are a big animal lover. You've, like, I know collecting animals is a weird no, phrase to use. No, don't make me sound crazy. I, people think I'm crazy enough. No, I've rescued a lot of animals. I found a lot of animals whole. Crazy! <laughs> <laughs> I only have three dogs right now. It's fine. But over the years, you've rescued the things that, that didn't sound like they needed rescuing. <laughs> To me, a rat. Uh, that rat was amazing. But did it need rescuing? I know. I see your eyes. Someone told me that you have a terrifying rat story. I don't, I, I don't care for them. They're, they're very, they're I, like unbelievably I, I, smart, though. I, I, I've been sitting on a loo oh. in India, and a rat comes up. <gasps> oh my God! Oh. It's not attractive. <laughs> 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 and are you are you going to be over here for a while now promoting and stuff? What day is it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's Friday now. Oh, it is Friday. Well, every day is Friday, right? Yeah, on this show it is. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's Friday. <laughs> Listen, just before we go, uh, we've got time for a visit to the big red chair. So let's do it. Who's there? Hello. Hello. Hi. What's your name? Tony. Tony. Lovely Tony. <laughs> Nice to speak to you, Graham. <laughs> it's good, Tony. What do you do? Uh, I work in a secondary school, teacher, Graham. Oh, yes. A specific subject? No, I work with mainly now behaviour with all the little rascals. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone think Tony isn't a real person? Absolutely <laughs> <laughs> real. <laughs> I'll be going with this story, Tony. Yeah, what happened was it was about five years ago. <laughs> And uh, we've just gone back to school in January. I've got my new suit. I always like to get a new suit for the new year. Of course. And uh, Yeah, naturally. And what's happened is I've gone into the canteen as normal cos I always like to eat, eat with the pupils and then go out on duty. So I've gone down. It's my favourite. There's a little roast dinner. So I've gone into the queue. Nice little bit of lamb, roast potatoes, greens, gravy. <laughs> And uh, I thought to myself, because normally I don't get an after, so I thought I'll have a little after, a little bit of that with my custard. Lovely. So I've got that, got me little tray. Walk round where you go to get the uh, forks and knives. And as I've gone round, there must have been a bit of water. I didn't see the water. <laughs> the other foot's gone. I thought, shit, I'm going over. <laughs> and it went in slow motion. I can still remember it. It was slow motion. And I've got the tray. I'm thinking, I've got to hold that tray. <laughs> I've got it over. My back's hit the floor. The tray's gone over, I've got gravy custard, <laughs> apple pie and a little bit of lamb. And as I've looked up through the gravy and the custard, I can see a hundred teenagers going, Sir's gone over! Sir's gone over! <laughs> and that's my story, Graham. Oh, you can let me even walk. Do you think Tony was real? <laughs> One word he said. <laughs> <laughs> I had me tuna, me gravy, me custard. <laughs> and I was there, was there. there was no tuna. I don't know. There was, there was no tuna. <laughs> and well done, everyone. If you'd like to join us on the show and have a go in the red chair, you can contact us via our website at this very address. And that's it for tonight. So please say a huge thank you to my guests tonight. El King, everybody. <laughs> You Laurie! <laughs> Olivia Coleman! <laughs> Kevin Hart! Ice Cube! <laughs> and Sir David Attenborough! <laughs> Join me next week with the singer Lauren Vula. From Dad's Army, Toby Jones and Catherine City Jones, X One Directioner, Zayn Malik, movie star Ryan Reynolds, and the one and only Will Smith. I'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Bye bye!